A little video here on the why and how of writing these complementary chord progressions. I mentioned in a previous video that sometimes songs just use a single chord progression for the entire song, kind of like we did in the uh, loops uh, song we made, loop based song where you expand that outwards. And a lot of pop songs do this too, where they just take a chord progression and use it the whole time. Now, why would we want to have multiple chord progressions? Well, it's more interesting. Basically, that's all it comes down to. Each section is able to have its own feeling. So you can give the verse its own feeling from the chords, the chorus its own feeling, and the, and the bridge its own feeling, and even the intro and the outro if you want. They can have different chord progressions too. And you get this flow of feelings, flow of emotions. Instead of a static feeling the whole time, it changes. So when it hits the chorus, it feels different. And then when it hits the verse, it feels different again. So writing complementary chord progressions is very useful and takes your music to a new level because a lot of people don't do it. It's actually easier, of course, to not write multiple chord progressions. You only have to write one and then repeat it the whole song, but that's kind of boring, I think. So it's good to start practicing as soon as possible on writing these complementary progressions. Now for the how of how to do this, as I mentioned before, we're just gonna take the chords that come from C major, put them in new combinations for each section. Some sections might have two chords, some might have four, some might have eight, some might have three, just depends on how you wanna do it. And we wanna be aware of this quality of the key center of C major feeling like home. So maybe in my uh, verse, I would not start on C, and I could start on F, go to D, go to E, then G, and the chorus comes, and then now it feels like we're home, right? We've arrived at C, and the chorus could be C going to F maybe, and just that, it could just be C and F. So the verse had four chords, and the chorus only has two, but the verse didn't hit the C chord, but the chorus did. And that means that when we hear that instinctively or subconsciously, the listener is going to feel something when they hear that C major chord hit, because C major is the root note, and it's going to feel like important. Now, that is not a rule. That is not something you have to do every time, like play the C major chord on the chorus. Definitely not. But it, it's an example of a way of thinking about writing chord progressions. You might want to start your verse with C major and never hit C major during the chorus for any number of reasons. That would be totally fine as well. So, but it's just, the point is to keep in mind that each of the chords feels different. And as you're writing your chord progressions, it's good to start to take notice of how each chord feels inside the key. So if I'm on C and I go to E minor, it feels like that. But if I go C to D minor, it's a different feeling, right? If I go to C to A minor, it's different again. Even though all three of those chords, E, D, and A, are minor chords, the specific note that they occur on makes them feel different compared to the root note of the key. So that's something to think about, at least be aware of as you're writing these chord progressions, is, is this exactly how I want it to feel? If not, just change the chord. Try a different one from the key until you find the combination that you like. And keeping this in mind allows you to make good decisions when you're writing these complementary sections. You know, you might say, well, I ended this section on C, so maybe I won't begin the next section on C. I might begin it on a different one so I don't get it twice in a row. Or maybe you say, I want to hear C twice in a row, so I'm going to end this one on C and begin this one on C. Anything is valid. You can do whatever you want, but it's just important to consider what you're doing and make conscious choices about why are you doing that and do you like how it sounds. If you don't like how it sounds, try something else. To make this whole thing easier, especially easier to talk about, we are going to now learn something called the number system, at least the basics of it. And the number system is a way of numbering the chords inside a key so that you don't have to say their names all the time. You can just say their number and it's a much faster way of talking about them. And you actually learn a lot about chord progressions when you use these numbers. So let's learn that in the next one.